Jay Leno's Garage, of course. Never miss an episode of that. You can catch it all on uh, his YouTube channel, Jay Leno's Garage, and shoot him a tweet at Jay Leno as well. Good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, nice to be back. Uh, so first things first, uh, an outpouring of um, well-wishers after yeah, people, accident. Yeah, very nice. I thought it'd be like, I hope you die, Leno. No, we didn't get any of that. Actually, actually everybody's very nice. I, I, I think, yeah, the everybody. president reached out to you. Yeah, the president called a couple of times. Yeah, that was funny. Um, yeah, I mean, they had to, I mean, everyone says, well, you know, you want to die, but you want to experience your funeral because right. you want to see all those people saying all those nice things. You, you I, I've never said that, but yeah, that, it was nice to see, yes. But yes, this yes. was a nice test run. A nice test run. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was actually good. It was actually good. I was uh, home watching all the entertainment shows and the news feeds and everything, and uh, it was it was if as if you were a beloved American character. Well, the funny thing I always like entertainment tonight because when someone is sick or injured or killed, they always play the song slower. Yes. Jay Leno today. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, my favorite is when the guy from TMZ who talks like a cartoon character gets sort of somber now. Oh, yeah. Because he was talking about Lindsay Lohan being drunk 10 seconds ago, but now we're entering a serious subject. My favorite Harvey Levin story, you know, he's the TMZ guy. He used to be the... Courtroom guy, you know, but he used to be on ABC News. Yeah, at eleven o'clock, he was there. Um, like the what the Joel Grover, what do they call him there? Yeah, uh, the, the, it was like Consumer Commander yeah, consumer or something. Commander. So one day I'm, I'm sitting at home and I meet my buzzer. I look on the camera. Oh, it's Harvey Levin. You know, he goes, "Hello, is this the home of Jay Leno?" I go, well, "This is uh, Mr. Leno's housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson. How can I help you?" <laughs> He goes, uh, we're doing a story on celebrities who waste water. And Mr. Leno's water bill is uh, higher than normal. I said, oh, Mr. Leno is very thrifty about water. He, he's very careful, and he makes sure all the faucets are working properly. And now we did have a leaky a leaky uh, sprinkler system that may have contributed to it. Is Mr. Leno there? No, no, Mr. Leno's not here, but he, he gave me strict instructions. You know, so Harvey could tell, ask me these questions, right? So I go, well, thank you very much, right? So that night, I'm going to watch... So I'm watching ABC and like, Harvey, I'm outside the home of Jay Leno. He puts the mic next to the speaker <laughs> box and you hear, oh, Mr. Leno is very thrifty about saving. And it says, Mrs. Hudson, voice of uh, Mrs. Hudson, Jay Leno's housekeeper. So when I called him back and I go, you know, Harvey, that was me. I, I don't have a housekeeper. And he, that was very funny. I had never heard that one before. So... Uh, Jay showed me pictures at the Malibu Mart uh, several days back, which I would just dis- describe as a crime scene and gory and a mafia hit where they were trying to send a message. The, <gasps> the, the taglias. The pictures of your face that were just two weeks earlier from the time. Yeah, isn't I saw that amazing? That. And, and we, amazing. We did that in eight days, nine days. I, I, I mean, just unbelievable. So, how much time in the hyperbaric chamber? Uh, about four hours a day. <clears throat> and how much Chick Fil A could you consume from inside oh, the hospital? That, that's what you had to do. <laughs> I had it's to a, go it's there. a wonderful hospital. The food is a, it's hospital food. But no, they were they were actually very good at it. Because what happened was I, I was working on this steam car, and uh, the steam car is an open flame because you have a pilot. Yeah, and well, I, set the table. At, at, what day is it? What time? It's is Saturday, it? about twelve thirty. My friend Dave is there. Uh, and uh, I said, shoot me a little pressure through the fuel line, see if we can clear this line, you know? <laughs> okay. So it's nothing. I said, and all of a sudden, choof, I just get a face full of gas, you know, like maybe a quart. I go, Pah! and I just turn my head, and I see, Woof! And oh, boy, because I went, I went, Dave, I'm on fire. And he went, what? Don't get around. I go, Dave, I'm on fire. Look at me. So he looked at me, and he pulled me out, and then he jumped on me, and we extinguished it. But that time, my face was pretty burnt. So I said, well, let me go to the bathroom. So I go in the bathroom. I put cold water. I go, it doesn't look that bad, you know. <laughs> and he says, no, no, we got to call Paramount. I said, I don't want to bother. Okay. So Burbank Fire comes over, and they go, oh, yeah, this is pretty bad. Uh, really? Okay. I, I'm at, I said, I, you know, I'm at, uh, I'm at Flappers tonight. I, I can't. No, we can't do a show. I, okay. So they take me to St. John's. And then St. John says, no, you got to go to the Burn Center. Okay. So, okay. So I go back to my garage and I drive out to the burn center. 
You drove yourself. I drove myself out to the burn center. And I, I go in, I go, hi, I'm burned. Okay. Okay, we got to admit you right now. I go, well, my wife doesn't know anything about this. I, can I go home? For, no, you can't go home first. I go, guys, I, I got to, I can't, I got to go home first, and then I'll come back. So I went home, and I spent the night at home. You and, spent the first night at home? Yeah, and then that morning, I drove to the burn center and checked myself in, and <clears throat> take it from there. It, it's interesting, I mean, <clears throat> I'll say it so you don't have to, but you have a kind of stoicism, but it's not stoicism of, of literature. It's sort of like you think about other people first. Like your first thought is, oh, I told flappers I was doing 20 minutes tonight. That's well, actually your first... doing an hour and a half. But then, yeah, okay. I'm trying to make you yeah. more stoic. Yeah, okay. So you, your first is like, I have this obligation. Well, it didn't seem that bad to me because obviously I can't see Right, but that's part of the kind of stoicism. You know, a lot of people would have broken down, started crying and yelling at somebody. No, no, nothing worse than whiny celebrities. I I agree. Believe me, people love to see rich people set on fire. Is there something in... You know, it's the kind of thing uh, you you make jokes about it. If you start going, "Oh, woe is me," and how painful, people go, "Shut up!" You but know? your your next thought is about your wife, and it's, it's going to scare her. It's going to worry her. Right, right. And right. then you have this thing that I have too, which is I I, I just I'll just go home I, right. once I can if I can sleep in my own bed, I'll be fine. Exactly. Right. So I can't. Okay, let me backtrack for a second. You were sprayed with gasoline. Yeah, yeah. Was it immediately fire after that, or was there a beat or two of... Millisecond. And then fire. And I turned my head, and I saw the flame. So I quickly closed my eyes, and I held my breath, because I remember Nicky Lauder. Remember Nicky Lauder got sure. in the fire, and what did... He breathed in, he scorched his lungs. Right. So I said, okay, just... just I'm, I'm not a panicky person, so I just said, that's it, Dave, I'm on fire. Dave, I'm on fire. And he pulled me out. And then, okay, and then it was okay. You were under the car. I was under the car. He pulled me out. Yeah. And do I know Dave? By the way, Dave Kalaki, the big big guy, transmission guy, best he's... Allison transmission guy you're gonna find. Yeah. Well, I was looking for a new Allison guy. So yeah. He's well, there the you guy. go. D- Dave's the guy to do it. Yeah, not the guy to s- to uh, kindle the hearth at home, perhaps. But if you no, have a an good Allison... guy, if you catch on fire, you want to have Dave around. Yeah. But if you have an, I Allison mean, I probably would have lost his eye if it wasn't for Dave. Really? Yeah. Because he put his hand over my face, and, and my face was on fire, so that burned his whole arm. So he got oh, really? A, he got a bad burn also. So it, I, I thought the reports were an ambulance picked you up, the fire department showed up, but you no, drove that, the ambu- yourself. No, the, the ambulance, the fire department with the ambulance came to the garage, and they took me to St. Joe's. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I drove myself after you- that. You drove yourself back home. Yeah, yeah. Why did they let you leave St. Joe's? Well, you can't make somebody stay if they don't want to stay. I said, guys, I'll be back, I promise. But didn't they say it could get worse or there could be some scarring or some issues uh, or infection? Yeah, I guess there was some talk of that. But it, <laughs> uh, but it was it was all right. It turned out to be all right. And w- when you went home, then yeah. were you in exquisite pain? Because you burn your pinky and it'll keep you up at night. Yeah, it's, you know, you know it's, yeah, it's, it's. It's yeah, it's it's tricky. As I tell people, it's better than a broken leg. At least I'm not hobbling around. I mean, pain you can deal with, you know. And you go, okay, just just calm down. And, and it was it was okay. It was it was okay. I mean, once I got to the burn center, and they started treatment, it was you know actually you, your face is just wrapped in like a helmet for like nine days. And you're in the same room for, for, for nine or ten days. That'll drive you a little crazy. But uh, they were wonderful. It's a wonderful hospital. Probably one of the. It's probably the best burn center in the country. Actually, what did they physically do to get you looking? C- certainly, well, I don't want to say certainly, but a little bit younger than you looked well, before the burn. The fact burn. that I have smooth skin, pouty lips, and a tight butt has <laughs> nothing to do with the fire. That was purely coincidental at the hospital. Well, it looks like you've had a surgery. appeal as a women pay I a did have a appeal. appeal. I showed you that, that picture where they take a circular saw. It's like the size of your hand. They put it on your face, and they literally, they literally remove your face and put new skin in. Where do they get the skin? You know, it's taken from dead comics. Like this whole arm, is, <laughs> this is all red buttons. This oh, whole, really? This whole arm is red buttons. Yeah, this is all red buttons. I got a little Shandling, mm. uh, John, some John Panette, a little bit of, you oh, know, because they want to make sure the DNA takes, it's comic to comic, you know? Yeah, John Panette had a lot of extra skin to go he, around. He did, God rest he did, his soul. Yeah, we, we were going to make a car cover of what we had left. <laughs> Winnebago.